In this video, I want to show you what is a macro and also how to record a macro. So what is a macro? Maybe you've heard of the macros in Microsoft Excel. Well, a macro allows you to record your Excel commands so you can automate them. A macro is used to automate your repetitious commands, things that you do over and over again. And a macro can have as many commands as you want it or need it to record. So think of uh, your Excel spreadsheets. And maybe you go into the same Excel spreadsheet every single day. And every single day you, see, you do the same exact commands uh, in the same sequence. Well, that might be a good thing to record into a macro. So it can be used to automate things like formatting, printing, sorts, filters, charts, pivot tables, and every other Excel command and any combination thereof. So let's see how to record a macro in Microsoft Excel. Actually, we're going to switch over to Excel now. Now, this macro is going to be used to automate the, uh, the advanced filter feature of Microsoft Excel. So um, in another video, it'll show you specifically how to do the advanced filter, but this is going to be a macro that will automate the advanced filter. But I want you to know that, of course, a macro can be used for anything. This is just an example of how to record a macro. So I'm going to go over to Sheet 2, and Sheet 2 is where I have the criteria. So I want to be able to change the criteria and then be able to run the advanced filter uh, in one step, and that's what a macro is all about. So to record a macro, I'm going to pick on the, the uh, View menu, and then we come way over here, and we pick on the word Macros, and we pick on Record Macro. Now, first of all, you want to give your macro a name. So I'm going to call this one Run Filter. You can call it just about anything, except it doesn't like spaces in the name. So if you have more than one word, you can either put the two words together like I did here, or if you need a separator, you can use an underscore rather than a space. It just doesn't like spaces for whatever reason. But you want to give it a good name. Uh, now, here we're going to say Shortcut Key, and that way you can assign your macro to a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to type in the letter R, so that way it'll be the control R keyboard sequence to run that macro. I can also use uppercase letters like that. Notice how this one is control shift R. That would be the keyboard sequence for that one. Let me put it back to lowercase r. So you can use uppercase letters or you can use lowercase letters. Now, why is this important for you? Well, what this means is anytime that this particular workbook is open, then control R or whatever you use, will now run the macro instead of what it usually does. So try to use a letter here that you're not used for something else. Like I would never use control C for my macro because I use control C for a copy. Or I would never use control V for a macro because I use control V for paste. So try to think of a letter that you don't use for anything else because uh, anytime that this particular workbook is open, then that keyboard shortcut will now run the macro instead of what it usually does. Now, here's why it's also important for you. If you just wanted to run for this workbook only, then you would store it in this workbook. However, if you put it into the personal macro workbook, that means it's always available anytime you're in Excel with any workbook. It, it becomes kind of a universal. All right, so after you get good at it, maybe you can uh, think of something that might always run, and you would put that into the personal macro workbook. Otherwise, we're going to put it in this workbook. And then you can type in anything for the description, uh, or you can leave that blank. It is optional. But I'm going to say this macro uh, runs the advanced filter. So you need a macro name. Uh, I like to, um, you know, sometimes call it run filter or something like that. If you need more than one word, uh, either put the words together or use an underscore rather than a space. It just doesn't like spaces in the name for whatever reason. You want to give your macro a keyboard shortcut to make it easier to run. Remember, use a letter that you don't use for something else. And then usually I'll store the macro in this workbook. But if you want it to be a, a universal macro, then you put it in the personal macro workbook. And then you can put anything for the description. All macros will start off like this. I'm going to click on OK. Now, I want you to notice down here, on the bottom left of the screen, we see this blue square. As long as that blue square is there, you're now recording your macro. 
So everything you do with your keyboard, everything you do with your mouse will now be recorded into the macro. This is where you would start the commands that you want to record, whatever they might be, and however many commands that you want to do. So in this case, I'm going to rerun the advanced filter. So I'll pick on, first of all, I know I have to go back to the first sheet. I'm going to count the steps, by the way. Uh, so the first step is to go back to the first sheet here. And then I'm going to click on cell A1. So that's two steps. Uh, I'm going to pick on the data menu. That's three. Uh, here I'm going to pick on the word advanced, which starts the advanced filter. That's four steps. Uh, in this case, I'm going to filter the list in place. It already says that. Now, it already has the list range in there, which is correct. I'm going to pick where it says criteria range. So that will be five steps. And uh, the criteria happens to be on sheet two here. So I'll pick on sheet two. That's six steps. I'm going to highlight my criteria. Now, just, just for a point of reference as far as the advanced filter is concerned, I want to highlight the row that has the field names <clears throat> and only go down as many rows that actually have information. You don't want to include any blank rows or any blank columns as you're building the advanced filter. All right, so that was my seventh step. And then I'm going to click on OK. When I click on OK, it's going to run the advanced filter with that criteria, as we can see. Notice how I had the uh, items from France and dinner and Germany that were over 30 and Italy and lunch and the ones from the United States. That was the criteria from the uh, sheet two. Now, it could do even more steps within my macro. Remember, I'm still recording the macro. But at this point, I want to stop the macro. To stop the macro, you're going to click on this blue square at the bottom of the screen. Look what it says. A macro is currently recording. Click here to stop recording. I am going to click that. Now, we just recorded that macro. Let me, show, let me really show you the payoff of that. I'm going to pick on sheet two. Now, I'm going to change my criteria. Let's say instead of Italy, I'll have Austria. And instead of France, I'll type in Spain. So now it should give me the ones from Austria that are lunch and Spain that are dinner and so on. Now, remember my keyboard shortcut for the macro was um, Control R. So on my keyboard, I really am going to do Control R now. Notice how that reran the sequence of commands that I had recorded, basically you reran the advanced uh, filter, except now, instead of it being in, um, in eight steps, which it was the first time, it was only one step. So we reduced it down to, from eight steps down to one step. What if the series of commands that you wanted to record was 10 steps or 20 or 50 or 75 or however many? Imagine uh, getting that down to one step. Let's try that again. I'm going to pick on sheet two. And I'll change the criteria again. This time I want Austria and breakfast items. And maybe Spain and uh, lunch. And I want the ones uh, from Germany that are less than 30 this time. So I'll change that criteria also. I want to run my uh, advanced filter. Remember the keyboard shortcut is Control R. I'm going to do Control R. Now that just reran the advanced filter with the new criteria except it was only one step instead of being eight steps. And that is how we, uh, we record a macro, and that's the benefit of using them.